Welcome to Straight Talk. Today, we sit down with Slavica Domain, a dynamic leader and manager at Southern New Hampshire University. We're going to explore her inspiring journey to the United States and her pathway to success. We'll dive into her early apprehensions about immigrating, the career shift she made, and sit down and buckle up and get ready for that because there were a few of them, all positive, and how she now leads a talented team while navigating cultural differences. Slavica shares her passion for the cleaning industry, the value of training and certification, and how she is a strong partner of ISSA. And so at this time, I'm pleased to welcome to the program, Slavica Domain. Thank you for having me. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I hear an accent, Slavica. <laughs> yes. Um, so I grew up in a small country, um, North Macedonia. I don't know how many people are familiar with it, uh, but... Um, I was um, studying agriculture when um, 20 years ago I started this journey. So uh, while I was growing up, I come from low income family, but I always um, had my parents and my grandparents. So throughout my high school year, I worked on my grandparents' farm, and this is where I develop my love for farming and agriculture. Uh, when I was in college, I was studying agriculture engineering, an opportunity came up for me to come work and study here in the States. So at that time, uh, we there was a lot of corruption going on in our country. And really, the only way you could be successful or do more with your life is, you know, just step outside the box, take opportunity and do whatever, you know, something different. Um, you know, uh, I knew that if I wanted to be more, I needed to kind of get out of my comfort zone, explore the world and see what is out there. Um, and I'm glad I did that 20 years ago because that was one of the most, um, I guess, ex learning journey that I have taken in my entire life. Um, you know, I had to start from very, like the lowest. I had to work and study hard in order to get to where I am. Interesting story. So you mentioned North Macedonia. Mm -hmm. You're right. I didn't know where that was at. So I looked on the map. So you were surrounded by Bulgaria, Greece, Albania, Kosovo? Yes, correct. Okay. Never been there, but maybe one day I'll get there. But it's beautiful. There's a lot I'm of mountains imagine. and rivers, you know. Uh, it's absolutely gorgeous. And you've been here 20 years. So when yep. you moved here, did you speak English? Honestly, when I moved here, so throughout my whole school year while I was home, we had English classes, but I didn't know English very well. So when I came here in you know, work and study, I knew that if I wanted to do something with my life, if I wanted to do more than what I was doing at that time, I needed to learn English very well. So, you know, I met my husband at that time as well. So that kind of helped my learning process as well. Um, you know, I worked as a custodian for about four years, I believe. Um, and throughout those four years, I experienced um, uh, different, um, I guess, different type of things. Like I... You know, sometimes we were not um, appreciated. We were underappreciated and we didn't have much voice. Uh, but there are times where it depends who you work with. They were very welcoming and they appreciated the work that we all did. So at that time, when I was doing custodial work, I knew that I wanted to do more than just being a custodian. So I decided that I will take any opportunity that comes my way and work my way up. So that's what I did. Uh, while I was working in a hotel doing custodial work, uh, an inspector job came up. So I applied for it. So I got the job. And after that, you know, um, our head housekeeper left. So I took over some of her responsibilities. I gained more experience. Then I think uh, there was a point in time where I was like, you know what? I can do this. I can do this like being 
I can be a head housekeeper somewhere. So, um, you know, I decided to look for jobs and there was a job opening near my town. So I applied for it. I got it. And um, that was kind of that whole experience uh, was a lot of learning. I made a lot of mistakes along the way, but I learned from them. And really, if you look at it, that's the best way to learn. You make a mistake, you see what you did wrong, and then you you try not to repeat it and try to do something different moving forward. So, and then kind of progressed from there, um, you know, from a uh, hospitality industry, you know, I used to work weekends and holidays and all that. So I was like, you know what, I want a job where maybe I can do Monday through Friday, you know. So there was an opportunity to work in a uh, healthcare, and that was totally different. Um, so I was like, you know what, I'm going to go for it. I had to learn a lot. I had to go through a lot of certifications because healthcare. Um, it requires a different level of cleanliness, right? You, you know, you're dealing with infection diseases, you're dealing with uh, sick patients, you're dealing with like all kinds of like, um, uh, I guess it's a different type of environment. So I worked there for about a couple of years. I had about, uh, let's see, 20 employees that were under me. And again, I learned so much. Um, my boss at that time he was probably the best boss that I ever had he let me make you know make mistakes but he also taught me how to do better next time so from there I was like you know what I can do more than this <laughs> so I decided to move across the the borders of New Hampshire into Vermont and I worked in a healthcare there I had about let's see, 80 employees. Um, and that was a whole different level of learning as well. I think at, it was at that time when I really learned what leadership is and the importance that the front line workers are doing, you know, uh, the work that the front line workers are doing, how important it is. So I stayed there for a couple of years, but at that time, my my daughter was young. So it was kind of all up. My husband's family was all up in New Hampshire. So I was like, you know what? We need to move back. My husband got a job here in Portsmouth. So we moved back. I stayed home for about a year. And that was probably the best year I, you know, I, I spent time with my daughter. That was amazing. Um, I think uh, the, the memories we built were so, like, important at that time. And from there, I was ready to get back <laughs> into, uh, you know, uh, get back. So, um, you know, I looked uh, around here and then I found higher ed. I've never worked in higher ed. I've worked in healthcare or worked in hospitality. I never worked in higher ed. I was but like, you oh, said, I can do this. Yes, exactly. I can do this. So um, I started here about 10 years ago at Southern New Hampshire University, and I've been here since. Wow. A lot of, <laughs> lot of good details. So let's back up a bit. You mm -hmm. came to the United States about 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. You've been in Vermont and New Hampshire, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Where'd you meet your husband? Uh, up where I was working in New Hampshire. So what so is while he do? I was doing my work and study program, my husband was working was working at the same restaurant I was working at, ah. and that's how we met. Yes. Okay. Well, good story. And you say he helped you with your English. I think you're you mastered it. You have well, you know, he did because, you know, we, at home we speak English all the time. And also while I was working, I knew that I had to learn the language in order to do mm -hmm. something with my life, in order to like, you know, move up and stuff. So, you know, well, my first couple of years, I used to write things down and translate them of Macedonia and, you know, and. And kind of progressed from there. You know, I enrolled in classes here. Uh, I did a, a few certifications. So I think that all kind of helped build me to where I am today. Okay. So we're going to talk about more about your professional career as well. Mm -hmm. You are a big part of ISSA. Thank you for your support. I know you've taken training classes. Sim certification is important to you. I want to hear you say in Macedonian, everyone in the cleaning industry needs ISSA. 
индустрията за чистене им трева ISSA. Fantastic. Okay. That was an impromptu test. So, yeah, very good. Um, so you're with you're with Southern New Hampshire University. How many are on your team there? I have 40 employees. 40. Mm -hmm. And what's it like to manage that now? Thinking of all the things you've done, here you are. Is this your final stop? Is this where you find it? You're at the, your very best? Um, honestly, I, I mean, I'm pretty content at the moment, but I think I can do more. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, um, over the years here, I have learned so much from my team as a whole. Um, you know, I have um, employees range from 24 to 67. I have employees that have been here for 30 plus years. And I have a lot of like employees that have been here for 10 plus years. Um, you know, one thing that is consistent in here is a change and um, you know when you talk about change it's a little bit challenging in the beginning but um you know i think um i mean i'm pretty good with change so i don't i don't i mean if i have an opportunity in the future to do something more even greater i would definitely not be shy from it um but i definitely enjoy um, you know, working for Southern New Hampshire University. They're a wonderful uh, university. They do care about their employees. My team is wonderful. I mean, they all of them bring different value to the table. And I have learned from each and every one of them. Um, and that actually what is what makes me be a better leader and want to do more. Because, you know, the, the work that we all do is so important and i think a lot of times we we don't we get underappreciated and undervalued um you know and i i, I want to be that voice that tells people hey you know what you're not just a housekeeper you are more than just a housekeeper you know um so yeah i can sense that you're a natural leader and you enjoy what you do i think that's critical so your team you have good communication with them? Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the, the biggest thing is really being transparent and mm -hmm. open and um, give um, like a, a constructive criticism. You know, obviously we have our challenges along the way. Um, you know, not everyone is open to a feedback. Um, sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not. Uh, but you know what? If you're transparent and you kind of try to to help them understand from where you're coming from and try to kind of use those coaching moments. I think, um, I think that helps a lot with my team and because that's what I do. You know, I'll tell them what I think, uh, obviously on a way that they can understand. Not everyone understands it the same way. So you kind of have to be able to adjust your communication style with the different type of people. Um, you know, I also have a diverse um, group of people as well. Um, so, you know, everyone learns a little bit differently and everyone takes a, a feedback a little bit differently. So you have to be kind of adjust, your, you, you'll be able to adjust yourself to kind of communicate those things to them. Yeah, it makes sense. So, in your career, I've heard you say I could do that several times. You know, you're doing one job, you're you're knocking it out of the park, as the saying goes. Something else comes along. Others must have noticed you to make that happen. Your superiors, who you work with, who might hire you. Thinking about your team, mm -hmm. how do you recognize talent? How do you recognize somebody has a, an ability and they need to do more with what they can do. So, um, you know, there uh, throughout my my time here, um, there, there are different situations that require a different, um, I guess, response to it. And there are people that stand out. There are people that will just come out and say, you know what, I can help, I can do this. And, you know, there are people that they're natural leaders, they just need to kind of little coaching to get them there. Um, and, you know, when I see people, I try to kind of uh, match the skills 
to the people that can do them. Um, so, you know, I have uh, people that are great at this. So maybe I'll, I, you know, I'll put this in doing that. Uh, I have people that are great at this and encouraged to kind of move on and develop those skills further. Um, you know, we're lucky enough that uh, Southern our university actually provides um, like a personal development. Uh, we have actually budget for that. So everyone is encouraged to actually take you know, classes or, you know, um, attend maybe one of the university's classes that will help you kind of go to that next level. Um, and, you know, if someone like, let's say someone is not quite ready there to get to that level, I am, I will tell them as like, hey, you know what, you, you need to work on this. We need to work on this to get you to that level. Um, you know, and throughout my career here, I have had a, a few people that have moved out from custodial, you know, tech one to tech two to, a, a tra you know, to a lead position. Um, so floor techs. So you just got to be able to recognize those things and then help them, coach them to kind of move on to that next level. Very nice. You've talked about this already a bit, the training and certification with ISSA, with CMI and SIMS. What has that really helped you to, to accomplish as an individual leader and also with your teams? Do, how do you build that enthusiasm for training with your team and talk about that pathway? Um, so, um, you know, um, th so throughout my entire um, career here, uh, we've always, uh, we were always encouraged to kind of um, go for, you know, take training, take certifications. For me, the certification gives me a sense of uh, validation about the work that we do. Um, and, you know, um, I think that also, and sense of pride, right? So we are putting all these things in place. We are implementing all these things. But, you know, when you get that certification, actually, it's a validation of like, okay, yes, you know what, you are doing what you're supposed to be doing. Or uh, when, like, for example, I did the audit certification, that particular certification helped me so much with our workloading. Like I did the entire workloading for the university and between ISSA resources and that wor workloading certification, and also um, I, I know how much you're familiar with APA, I kind of created our workloading for the campus and I just resources to where I supposed to, you know, if I was short here, then I'm extra here, then I move things from one place to another. And I think at this point in time, we're in a place where I'm pretty comfortable where we are in terms of um, staff to square footage. Um, and, um, and we also have a little bit flexibility to work. So the certifications, I did learn a lot from them, also gave me the validation and the assurance that what we're doing is the right thing to do. So some watching this program might be um, in charge of budgets for cleaning and training programs for their organization. And some might say, Slavitsa, that training is expensive and certification maybe even more so but what would you tell them as to how to balance the value and what you get with the cost um so honestly certifications you know depends on budget they are expensive but the value you get is so much more than that um you know when you have people that go through this whole certification process is actually teaches them something and, and also kind of installs a, a sense of pride in them. So it helps with like, uh, you know, retaining employees. That's one thing. Uh, you know, you can look at your budget and say, okay, you know what, maybe I can kind of adjust my budget here in order to put some dollars into training because the value you get from training is so much than just the work, you know, than just a money really um you know and um another thing is i tell my people is like you get this certification and this certification is good anywhere really if you decide to kind of move on and and take your own journey and and become more successful 
that certification will help you. It will build you, will give you the skills, um, you know, and you just got to have to continue with it, you know, work on it. You know, it's not one time thing. Learning is a, it's a lifetime, you know, it's not like, okay, I am a certified now and I'm, I'm a, a professional and I can do, you know, whatever. I think it's, it's a learning. There's so many different certification out there and you can learn so much from each of them. You know, Slavica, your journey was all about you recognized your skill set and opportunity and you said, I can do this. What do you how do you feel when your team teammates do that? Your those on your team, when they're like, Yeah, I'm good, but here's an opportunity and it's not in New Hampshire. I'm gonna take it. How do you feel about that? Um, honestly, um, if I if I see someone, one of my team move on and do something more than what they are, I feel sense of pride and I feel sense of accomplishment. Uh, I have gone through, you know, my journey. And I think with every path you take, you learn something. And if someone decides to move on and, and do more with their life, I am so happy to see that. Um, you know, I have had employees that, you know, they move on, they they finish classes, they move on to a, a, a better, you know, a better job or a higher level. I'm happy for that. Mm -hmm. You know, that means as a leader, I have done my job. I have helped this employee move on to the next level. And honestly, if you look at it on the end, it, it, it's this is what makes a leader is really helping kind of push employees to that next level. You know, I have employees that were housekeepers and now they're leads, you know, and I worked with them and I tell them, okay, these are the things you need to work on. And, and, you know, don't be afraid, you know, you will make mistakes along the way, but that's okay. You mm -hmm. just learn from it and then do better next time. Yeah. Good advice. Some, I, th I think people look at training and certification as a skill set monitor, a way to get good at what they do, but you see it as bigger than that. You see it as a way to make yourself a better person, a better leader, no matter what mm -hmm. you do. Absolutely. So talk about your favorite ISSA programs. Uh, I know SIMS means a lot to you. Mm -hmm. For those watching this program right now, if they were like, Slavica, what should I do with ISSA? What would you tell them? Honestly, ISSA, it's a wonderful resource. Um, you know, just in general, looking at, uh, you know, and all the the things that you like in terms of my work, I have found so many resources on uh, on your website because of I am member of, of ISSA you know people are always helpful you learn from them there's like always looking like new technologies and new like standards coming up and also you know you guys kind of give a voice to our industry because you know we don't like in general, our industry does not get a lot of voice. And, um, you know, it, it's just, I don't know, just the resources are tremendous on, on through ISSA. I have probably, you know what, when I, like, let's see, uh, it was like six years ago, I think, uh, when I actually um, decided to join ISSA. I think it was six or seven years ago, something like that. And since I joined, I was looking at that SIM certification. Okay. So I was like, oh my God, I want to get this certification. I do want to do this. And, but I had things to do to put in place in order to, to, to get th there. So, you know, by using your resources, you know, the, the, working with some of the team member uh, of ISSA, I was able to get to that certification. That was kind of my goal. It was like, I don't know why, but I think it's just kind of validated. I think the work that we do. Um, and I, I mean, we are 100% in, in house um, housekeeping department. But for us is that for what this means for us is okay you know what we we know what we are doing to take care of our students because on the end of the day it's all about our students and the experience that they have i like that very good to wrap up slavita anything you would like to tell the industry we haven't shared yet or something we might have missed anything you can think of 
Um, you know, the one thing I would say that I hear a lot of, um, you know, throughout my career of uh, oh, almost like 20 years, uh, you know, being in management for 15 years is um, people think that the job we do is endless. But you know what? Our job is not endless. Our job is important. And I think everyone should take pride in the work we do. And you should not be ashamed of it. You know, I mean, just think about four years ago when COVID hit, right? We were the front line of defense. And that, you know, that means we help schools, um, organizations, and hospitals get back on track you know we were the front line of defense like on a regular day-to-day -day basis like for us is like working like taking care of our students this is what is about for me and my team because the students are our future they are our future and there's many studies done that providing a clean environment actually it's good for for learning um, so, you know, when I see, uh, when I hear feedback from our students, uh, or even from a customers in the past, because I worked in healthcare, I worked in, in hospitality, when you hear that feedback says, oh my God, this place is absolutely gorgeous. It's so clean. I've never been anywhere like that. That kind of gives you a sense of pride. So, you know what? I will tell everyone that listens to this is don't be ashamed of being a housekeeper because the job we do is so important. And another thing that I would say is if you have opportunities coming your way, don't be afraid to take them. You can do it. Everyone can do it. You just need to kind of be able to step out that comfort zone and go for it.